Father, we're grateful again tonight, and uh, Lord, we come to remember on this Good Friday the, the amazing sacrifice that was made on our behalf. And Lord, we want to say to you, we don't take it for granted. Lord, we understand that uh, even though we enjoy a salvation that is free, it was not free for you, Father. You gave your son. He paid the ultimate price, gave his life. And Father, I pray that today that you would tug at our hearts and those, Lord, those that haven't experienced Christ, that they would come and experience Christ in a very special way. Lord, we love you tonight. We commit this service. We ask your blessing upon all that, that Lord's going to happen tonight. Use it for your glory and your honor in the name of Jesus Christ. And God's people said, amen. amen. I want to speak to you this evening on the subject of uh, these hands. You know, after the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Luke tells us that there were some who did not believe that he had risen from the dead. So Jesus appears to them while they're gathered there together one, one late afternoon. And Luke picks up the story in Luke chapter 24 in verse 39. And notice what Luke says about that event when Jesus appears. He says, Behold, Jesus speaking, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And when he has said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And of course, what Jesus showed them that night was his nail-scarred hands and his feet, and all of that because of the crucifixion. You know, the Bible tells us that during and after his trial, hours before the crucifixion, Jesus was beaten. He was beaten to a pulp. He was beaten so bad that the Bible tells us that he was unrecognizable. You couldn't tell who he was. Isaiah, in Isaiah 53, verse 3, the prophet, he wrote these words. Started, he said this, Speaking of Jesus, he said, he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. Now Isaiah wrote these words, and Isaiah wrote these words 700 years before the event that he is describing, the event of the crucifixion. Now when we talk about the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the crucifixion brings a lot of questions into mind. You know, one of the questions that is being asked today is that when Jesus was nailed to the cross, did the nails go through his hands or did they go through his wrists? You know, some scientists and some theologians have suggested that if he was crucified on the cross, our traditional cross, as we believe, the hands would have not been strong enough to hold his weight. So there are those out there that suggest that the nails were not put through his hands, they were actually put through his wrist. And the wrist had enough, uh, there was enough strength that would be able to hold up the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Others have suggested that the hands would have been strong enough, considering that his feet were also nailed, and that would have supported his weight. There's also some historical evidence that when they would crucify people, that they would put a little seat where they could actually lean on, and a little footstool where he could put their feet, where they could sustain themselves. And, and, and that's a big controversy. But what the Bible does tell us, it doesn't tell us whether it was, it tells us about his hands, that he showed the disciples his hands, but really we don't know if the nails were in his hands or in his wrists. What it does tell us is that Jesus was wounded and his hands were wounded. And the Bible says that nails were driven, you know, whether it's his hands and his wrists or his wrist. And the Bible says he did it for the sins of the world, for your sins and my sins. John, the gospel writer, also talking about Jesus appearing to his disciples. In John chapter 20, John writes these words. He says, and after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. And Jesus came, and the doors being shut. By the way, Thomas wasn't at the first time Jesus appeared. He missed it. You know, when you miss church, you miss some exciting things, amen? Thomas missed that exciting time he appeared. And Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. So eight days later, Jesus comes, and the door being shut. And he stood in the midst and he said, peace be to you. And he said to Thomas, he directed himself at Thomas and he said, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe, believing. You know, it's interesting that in the, in the Greek, when the Bible talks about the hands of the Lord Jesus, it is, a, it is a, the Greek word hira. And the word hira actually literally means hands. 
By the way, in the Greek, in the Bible, there is no word for wrists. It doesn't describe the, the nails in wrists. There's no such a word. But spiritually, what we do know from the Bible is that the wounds of Christ hold significance to us because in the exact location really is a minor issue. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that we know he was wounded for us. We know he had five wounds, one on each hand, one on each feet, that's four, and then one on his side. And although we don't know exactly where the hands or what, where it was done at, we do know by that his wounds we are healed. We do know that it purchased our salvation and it purchased our spiritual healing and our physical healing and our emotional healing and all the healing that we need. That we know for sure. But the wounds on his body brought about tremendous healing to every single one of us. By the way, the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ were very important. You know, hands are, are symbolically used to refer to uh, people's actions. So sometimes people will say about you, you have hardworking hands. Or if you're violent, you have bloody hands. Or if you're generous and kind and gracious, you have gracious hands. Or if you're dirty, you have dirty hands. You know, hands are used as a representation of our lives. And we do a lot of things with our hands. You know what? Our hands sometimes are dirty. Our hands, as we saw in the drama, are sinful hands. Sometimes we use our hands to do ungodly things and things that we never thought we would do. But the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ were holy hands. You know, during his ministry, the Bible describes often what Jesus did with his hands. For example, the Bible says that Jesus used his hands to heal people. They were healing hands. And you can't read the Gospels without reading how Jesus healed the lepers, how he healed the deaf, how he healed the blind. You know, even at the garden when he was arrested, the Bible says that Peter took out a, a, a little uh, uh, a knife and he cut off the ear of one of the, of the persons that was there. And the Bible says Jesus picked up the ear of Malchus. It gives us the name of the guy and he put it on him and he healed him. And he told him, Peter, you know what? You, you pull out the sword, you will die by the sword. Even healed him. Several times, you know, with his hands, he would pray and dead people will rise. He raised Lazarus from the dead. There's a story that I love that's found in the gospel, and it's the story of a demonic son. And one day they come to Jesus, and the mom and the dad says, you know, we need your help. We have a son who is possessed. In other words, he is seized by this demon, and when the demon possesses him, it throws him into the fire, and many times it's trying to drown him. And you know what? And he foams at the mouth, and he gnashes his teeth, and he becomes very rigid. And, and we don't know what to do. And Jesus said, bring him to me. And he told those people, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Laid hands on him. And you know what? Touched him with his hands. And he was delivered from de demonic possession. And we believe today that we serve a Christ that is still in the healing, miracle, working business. We believe that his hands are still touching and moving and making healings and miracles in the lives of people. We believe that. People ask, why do you guys believe that? Well, because Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. What he did yesterday, he'll do today, and he will continue to do it. If you're here and you need his healing hands, if you believe, Jesus said, whatever you believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. But during his ministry, we saw healing hands. But you know, we also saw the gospel tells us that not only were the healing hands, they were welcoming hands. You know, one day, Peter, uh, Jesus is out in a boat, and the Bible says that Peter sees him, and, and, and he sees Jesus walking on water, and Peter says, Lord, have me come to you. And Jesus said, come, and Peter comes, and he starts walking on water. And it wasn't rocks, it was water. And the Bible says he got so excited, he took his eyes off Jesus, and he started to sink, and he says to the Lord, Lord, help me, I'm perishing. And immediately, the Bible says Jesus stretched out his hand, and he caught him, and he welcomed him, and he says, you're going to be okay. By the way, he can catch you tonight if you're falling and if you're sinking in despair. You know what? His welcoming hands will pick you up. It doesn't matter what your situation is because they are welcoming hands. In the ministry, we saw, in his ministry, we saw him how he welcomed the children, how he welcomed women. By the way, in that culture, children were not that important. Women were not that important. And one day, the children, the parents were bringing children to be blessed of the Lord, and his disciples got mad. Get him out of here. He's too busy. And Jesus said, don't you ever do that again. Of theirs is the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that he welcomed them. The Bible says that he laid hands on them. And by the way, the hands, when it says he, he, he touched them, it doesn't mean he patted them on the hat, head. The word for touched them is the Greek word for he cuddled them. He embraced them. He welcomed them. He loved them. And then there's a story where one day they bring this adulterous woman to Jesus. 
She's been caught in the act of adultery, out of wedlock, you know? And they bring her and they say, Lord, what do you recommend we do to this lady? Well, the law says she should be stoned. But Jesus, the Bible says that he, he turned to them and he says, those of you that are without sin, cast the first stone. And then the Bible says that he kneeled down and he wrote on the ground. And one by one, they started taking off. And when they were all gone, he looks at the woman and he says, woman, who condemns you? No one. I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. And I'm sure what Jesus did that day is that he shared with her his love, the love of God. And she became a new person. And the reason she could go out and sin no more is because she didn't have to. You know what? She didn't have to look for love in all the wrong places. She had found it in the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to notice that welcoming hands of Jesus, he welcomed them. And he welcomes you. You know, the Samaritan woman, there's a story where he's going through up to Galilee. He's crossing through a, a region called Samaria. Samaria. And he stops at a well, and there's a woman there. And he begins to engage her in conversation. By the way, in those days, a, a Jewish man, first of all, talked to no Samaritan people at all. They didn't get along. No, no dignified Jewish man would ever talk to a woman out in public. It was a no-no. But Jesus sees her, and he begins to talk to her. He doesn't reject her like the culture said you should. He doesn't ignore her. He doesn't put her down. You know what he does? He welcomes her. Even though they were despised by everybody else, Jesus was a welcoming Savior. And he welcomed her. And he shared with her. And the Bible says that that day she found life and she found spiritual life. And she left that place and she goes into the city and she began to share, come and see, I found a man who has told me things about me that there's no way anybody could have known. And she found life and she found salvation. You know why? Because Jesus' hands were welcoming hands. Amen. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 18, verse 6, the psalmist writes in the Old Testament, and he says, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God, and he heard my voice from his temple, and my cries came before him, even to his ears. Listen, when you call upon the Lord, he hears your cries. He hears your prayers. He welcomes you. He welcomes your prayers. You know why? Because he's, wel he's a welcoming God. He has welcoming hands, and he reaches out to you. Today, there are some of you, there's a lot of people that think, well, God wouldn't want me. I mean, you know, God wouldn't, I, I, I'm a bad person. I'm, I'm a, I, I've done some terrible things. But the hands of Jesus are welcoming hands. And that includes you. And then we, we read in the Gospels that not only were they miracle healing hands and welcoming hands, they were saving hands. You know, John writes in John chapter 10 and verse 28 and verse 30, and Jesus, these are the words of Jesus. Jesus said these words. He said, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. And I and my Father are one. In other words, you know what? When he touches your heart and he saves you and you're in the hands of God, nothing, nothing can harm you. Nothing can pluck you. Nothing can take you out of the saving hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're saving hands. One of my favorite scriptures is over there in Revelation in chapter 3 and verse 20 where it talks about he knocks at the door of your heart. And notice what it says. Jesus speaking. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him and I'll sup with him and him with me. You know what these savings hands are doing? They're knocking at the door of your heart. They're knocking and saying, Would you let me in? You know, God, Jesus will never force himself upon you. He will never, ever, ever make you do something you don't want to do. Even a, a love as great as his, and as wonderful as it is to experience it, he won't force it upon you. So he'll knock at the door of your heart. And that saving hand knocks, and that saving hand says, if you let me, you know what, I'll turn you around. Uh, and the word save, by the way, means that you'll be better. He's going he's gonna to make you whole because he has saving hands. But we're here tonight to celebrate the nail-scarred hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. His hands even though they're healing hands and welcoming hands and saving hands, one of the things the Bible tells us is that, is that they're nail-scarred hands. Over uh, Zechariah, many hundred years before Jesus was born, he prophesied of what would happen. And this is what he writes in Zechariah 13, verse 6. He says, And one shall say unto him, you know, why are these wounds in your hands? In other words, uh, Zechariah saw the day where people would see the wounds on the hands of the Savior and they would ask, why? What happened to you? And then he shall answer, those with which I was wounded 
in the house of my friends. In other words, it was my friends that did this. It was people that I came to love, people that I came to save, people that I came to welcome, people that I came to, you know what, to rescue. It was them. I want us to think today about the nail-scarred hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when I think of the nail-scarred hands of the Lord Jesus Christ, there, there, are th there, are, there are three things that come to my mind, and here they are real quick. When I think of the nail-scarred hands of the Lord Jesus, this is the first thing I think of. They tell me that Jesus suffered. It talks about his suffering. You know, crucifixion uh, was considered the most horrible form of death. I mean, when they wanted, what, really wanted to punish somebody, uh, they would crucify them. But prior to the crucifixion, there was also this degradation, this humiliation of the individual. And historians tell us, and the Bible confirms it, that what they would do is that they would get the criminal and they would march him through the city and they would put a sign over him for what he was guilty of. And people would mock him and they would spit at him and they would jeer at him. And then the Bible says also that it was not uncommon that they would beat them to the pulp. And that's what they did to Jesus. The Bible tells us that they stripped Jesus naked, literally naked, of all of his clothes. And then... They inflicted on him the most awful, imaginable beating that any of us could ever imagine. And such was the death. You know, we think of the hands, but more than the hands, it was the whole body of the Lord Jesus Christ. He suffered in his body. We remember that tonight. And then when I think of the nail-scarred hands of the Lord Jesus Christ, I also think about why he did it. The Bible tells us he suffered because he cares, he understands. And he knows that that's the only way you and I could be saved. You know, he took the beating and he took all that he did. He did it for us. The Bible says that he loved us, so he did it for us. That's why when you hurt, he hurts. The Bible tells us that we don't have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. The Bible tells us that he was in all points tempted like as we are. And Jesus in his human body, he suffered. And when you suffer, he knows exactly what you feel. You know, those nail-scarred hands, they tell us, you know, it's like Jesus saying, as you see those hands, it's Jesus saying, I've been there. I understand. Sometimes we think the Lord doesn't understand. Sometimes we think he has no clue, but he does. You know what? Jesus knows what it is uh, to weep. The Bible says he was at the graveside of Lazarus, a good friend of his. And the Bible says the shortest scripture, the shortest verse in all the Bible, it says he wept. The Bible says that, that when he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion. The word compassion is, a, is, is two Latin words, meaning with and, and, and com with, pati, which is suffering, which means he feels, he understands. If you're suffering today, he knows you're suffering. You know, when I look at the scars of the Lord Jesus Christ, those scars tell us that when we suffer, when we hurt, you know what? He hurts. He understands our pain. The nail-scarred hands of the Lord Jesus Christ speak to the greatness of his love. In your affliction, in all that you go through, Jesus says, I went through this so that you know that I care and I understand and I can help you more than anyone else. I want you to know tonight he can help you regardless of what you're going through. He suffered when I see, I realize he suffered. I saw when I see his nails, I realize he did it because he, he cares about us and he understands and he knows. There's a lot of people that say he could care less. That's not what the Bible says. He cares. And then the third thing I think about when I see the nail-scarred hands of the Lord, I think about the fact that he is overcome and he is conquered. And when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you become an overcomer and a conqueror. You know, there's victory in those nail-scarred hands. Amen? That's why on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. It's done. It's paid for. Your, your debt has been paid at Calvary. You know what? You can live victorious life. You can be an overcomer. There's a lot of people that are victims today and don't know they can be victorious, don't know they can overcome. So I want to ask you, are you suffering today? And I want you to know that in that pain, in that anguish, in that doubt, in that confusion, he's reaching out those hands to you. And he says to you, my child, I know how you feel. Cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Jesus says, you know, those nail-scarred hands, they speak out and they say, I'm touched by the feelings of your pain. Place your hands in the nail-scarred hands uh, of Jesus. Why don't you come and, and put your hand on my hand and, and do it, and I'll make a difference in your life. I believe there's somebody here today who's lost, who's hurting, and you're not certain that you're saved, and you don't know that you're right with God. 
And there's something inside of you that says there's got to be something better. There's got to be something more. You know what? And, and maybe you grew up in church and you know you got to be saved and you want to be saved. The way you're saved is when you come and you put your dirty, messed up, sinful hands on those nail-scarred hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you say to the Lord, Lord, come into my heart. Save me. Forgive me of my sin. Make me your child. I want to do your will. You don't have to go and get drunk anymore and take a, you know what, take a drink to sedate yourself or to, you know what, medicate yourself. You know, you don't have to do that anymore to block the pain. A lot of people, that's how they block the pain. You don't need a sedative. What you need is you need a Savior. You need Jesus who died on the cross for you. I think of those nail-scarred hands. But you know, uh, when I think of the hands of the Lord also, I, I, I think of those wonderful hands. They're, they're wonderful hands. I mean, uh, I like to be embraced, and uh, there's nothing like a warm embrace of arms and hands of people that love you. Those wonderful hands, like grandmas and moms and dads and dear friends or wife or children, or especially grandchildren. Can I hear a good amen to that? But, but Jesus' hands are wonderful hands. Over there in John in chapter 10, Jesus said these words. He said, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. You know, these wonderful hands of the Lord Jesus Christ that are nail scarred were covered by his hands, were comforted by his hands. You're complete in his hands. You know, one day we're going to get to heaven, and the only man-made thing that you're going to find in heaven are the scars that were inflicted upon Jesus. That's the only man-made thing you're going to find in heaven. The scars in the hands of Jesus. The wounds on his feet. The wound on his side. You know, my wife and I, when we go on vacation, one of the, uh, or we go far away, one of the things that we've been doing for years is that we'll bring back a souvenir to remind us of our trip, wherever that was. And we have it there. I have it in my office, or we have it there in the living room. And it reminds me, and, you know, we were there. And people, it's a conversation piece. But the Bible says that Jesus, one day God sent his son, Jesus, and he visited planet Earth, and he came to die for the sins of the world. And he went back home, and he took a souvenir. It wasn't something cheap, and it wasn't something temporary, but something that will endure for all eternity. And it bought your and my salvation. And it was the scars on his hand and his feet and on his side. It was the, the punishment. It was your sin. The Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin so that you and I could become the righteousness of God. He took our punishment. And these wonderful hands that are nail scarred, they want to hold you. They want to embrace you. On this Good Friday, the message from God to you is I love you. So I want to ask you, who holds you today? Is it the, the, the hands of the Lord, those wonderful hands? Or are you being held by something else? No, today we remind you that Jesus Christ came, and he came for you and for me. Can I hear a good amen to that? Amen.